What we have here is a 300 cubic inch inline six from Ford 85 model, and the water pump's gone out. And you can see I've taken off the um, the hoses, the top hose, and the uh, uh, looks up the bottom hose. Not necessary for this particular application, but it is down right there. Now these lines, the radiator here doesn't have to come off in this particular case, but all these pulleys right here. The alternator down there, right there, uh, as well as the um, power steering pump and the air conditioner compressor, which is right there, will have to be loosened up. As you can see, the loosening nuts right here, and you have some down there. Um, this one here being on the bottom down here. It's one nut to loosen this one, one nut to loosen that one, one nut to loosen this one back here. And on the bottom down here, there's two nuts. There's one that swings down, as you can see down right there. It swings down. There's also one in the back here. If you go above the motor, this 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 smog pump right here, which is useless, but it won't run good without it. It's one deep up in there, five eighths. Rest on pretty much nine sixteenths. You can take an inline wrench. I want to get two good ones, pretty much get all this off. Now this water pump went out. As you can see, see that? If it moves like that, that's a problem. Got a water leak. Water went out. Luckily, we didn't overheat this engine here and burn the motor up. And I'll get back to you in just a minute. Okay, so the next step we're going to have to do is we're going to have to loosen up once we get all the belts off. We've taken all the belts off. Keep them, keeping the belts in order. Uh, it's handy because when you go to put them back on, you have to wrestle with them because they are fairly close in size. If you look over here, they're really close in size right there. So you don't want to have to mess around those things. So when you come back over here, this right here, we've got to loosen. There's four of these nuts, kind of clockwise, of course. Clutch fan here. Get something to hold. It's about an inch and a quarter, I believe, nut right there. And it is very difficult. You want to take these loose typically before you take the belts off. Therefore, the engine is and the pulleys are held for you so you can loosen the nuts off. If you don't, just grab uh, something that fits on the nut real good and hold it, and they'll still break off fairly, fairly easy. But they're going to be tight. So once you get those off, uh, we'll be able to remove our water pump, and I'll get back in just a second. All right, so we're back here on this water pump we're talking about. Now, remember I talked about these nuts, if you see down here. Um, sorry about that. If you see the nuts down there, right there, those nuts there. Now, before you take those nuts out, we talked about earlier about taking those out, but before you take those off, and you can do this, it's probably best to do it with the belts on. You see this big nut right here that holds this, this fan on. That's a left-handed uh, threaded nut right here. Okay, the fan. That thing is torqued. Some trucks are torqued more than others, but um, are torqued over 100 pounds, most of them. I'm not sure the specs on this one. I know the 7.3 diesel I have is torqued at 200 foot-pounds of, of torque, and that's a lot for a nut. I don't know why they torque one so much, especially on a fan, especially with left-handed threads. It would be highly unlikely for it to come off, but I'm sure it's engineered that way for a reason. But anyway, to get that off, that nuts, if you ever tackle one of these, you're going to be quite frustrated. What you have to do, or want to do, is take your wrench, okay? Slide your wrench down it like that. Now, once you get your wrench on it like this right here, okay, it doesn't matter as far as it sitting there. Notice I have a, I borrowed this from a friend of mine. You can take a big crescent wrench, but the crescent wrench doesn't give the energy you need. You're going to hit the top of this wrench right here, and it's going to, um, the energy from it is going to uh, travel down the wrench, and it's going to hit the nut to knock it loose. And that energy hitting the nut, um, it's like taking two ball joints out. Those of you that's done this before, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we're going to hit it, and we're going to um, knock, knock the nut loose. So stand by. So we've got a wrench in place here. I'll come here. Time takes more than one lick. Yeah, so now we can start removing the fan right here you can just turn this right here screw it off here and careful not to bust your radiator because if you do that then you're going to be buying a new radiator and that's going to be the least of your worries as far as your water pump you don't want to have to do that so 
and I've done that. So we got that off. Now we take these screws here out. Poison's gonna come off. We'll see the water pump behind that. Be back in just a second. All right, so we have our water pump off now. If you look down right about there, you can see um, right there's where the water pump was at. And I got a little bit of trash, of course, right there. See that right there? You definitely want to make sure you get that out. Because um, that's pretty much what made this uh, water pump fail, is trash in the uh, water system, whether it be heater coil or um, radiator or whatever. Either way, it's trash in it, and if it gets rust, they will rust, of course. And over time, especially if they're old, this particular water pump had this one right here, as you see right here. Uh, it's got about 130,000 miles on it, so I've got the miles out of the water pump. And this is all it is to the water pump. This thing turns, okay, causing the water to a cyclone motion, you might say, and removes the water about through the motor and through the radiator, through these hoses and so forth, and the big hose through the radiator. But you can see here, if you wiggle it right here, get this thing stood up here. As you can see right here, See how it moves there? And you really can't tell as much as I can, but it's a uh, it's shy, it won't even turn. But this thing here is has really had it. You hear that wobbling? That is the water pump bearing deep down inside there. If you, if you look, see the black down inside there? That is part of that bearing uh, race and so forth. That's sticking out. So, bad water pump, make a long story short. Get back with you in just a few. All right, welcome back. We've finished now the install of the water pump. And I went ahead and installed the thermostat, as you can see down here. I've got all the belts back on, tightened up very well. You don't want to over tighten those belts. You get them too tight, you get wire right bearings, and plus the belts and overtime and uh, prematurely, you don't want to do that. Got all the hoses back on. And as you can see, you got the breathing everything back on. Going back to the heater coil and whatnot. And also replace the solenoid. And you want to be careful right here to not mix these right here up. Uh, mixing these up can um, not only uh, cause malfunction of a lot of parts, but uh, can get you hurt. But uh, you get positive over there. And this S is going to be a, it's a switch solenoid. So, which means inside, inside this solenoid right here, you have a switched mechanism or a, a coil that's, that turns and creates, or creates a mag magnetic field. And what that does is causes a washer type device to come down and then polarize out through both of these right here. Thus, going uh, from the battery here, comes over here and it crosses, you know, it's switched over here, which leads down to the starter wire, which is what cranks the starter. So, looks kind of a little complicated, but it's not too bad once you understand some of the basic concepts. So, anyway, you get the water pump on, everything's installed, and fired up, we're good to go. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.